Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Telling Tales, and welcome to our somewhat delayed uh, one shot of Tales from the Loop. We tried to run this in February, and it all fell apart on us. Um, so here we are in March. And um, as everyone knows, nothing has changed in the world between February and March, so um, everything's fine, and we're here to lead you through some wonderful role-playing in the 80s that never was. Tales from the Loop is a game from Free League. It's heavily, heavily, heavily inspired by the art and words of um, Simon Stalenhag, a Swedish artist and writer, and it's a wonderful blend of kind of retro, futurist, sci-fi, and horror um, if you if you kind of think that the touchstone everyone uses is Stranger Things, although this does pr slightly predate Stranger Things, but if you think of like sort of 80s films where kids solve some kind of sci-fi or horror mystery in uh, like little uh, quiet towns, then this is, this is essentially what the game is. Uh, it's fantastic. It's one of the games that, um, while I didn't kind of fall completely away from tabletop role-playing, it's one of the games that came out a few years ago that really pulled me back into the hobby. So, yeah, looking forward to running it, and um, been looking forward to that for quite some time. Um, let's get some normal promo out of the way. If you check down below, there's a bunch of links. There's links to our Twitch and our YouTube. If you're watching this on one of them, please check out the other. There's links to our social media, our Discord, our Patreon, all those things. Do what you might expect, and we'd love to see you on them. Uh, we run three weekly shows here on the channel usually, although one of them is on hiatus. The ones that are not are currently uh, Shadows of Esteran runs on Monday. That's our Monday crew, led by Johnny, and that's a kind of low gothic fantasy thing. And we have Simbroom, which is uh, dark fantasy, uh, low gothic fantasy and dark fantasy. They're very different, I promise. Uh, but Wednesdays is Simbroom, our dark fantasy series, run by myself. Both of those start at 8 o'clock in the evening. GMT. Uh, yeah, and here more or less on a weekly basis. The one that's on hiatus at the moment is Cincinnati Chronicles, which is a World of Darkness anthology series, which will be returning in May, probably. Probably, maybe, probably. Uh, we also run one-shots on the first weekend of every month. Uh, that's this. That's what this is. Uh, but there's a bunch of others that we've run over the last year and a bit. Go check them out on YouTube. They're all there in VOD form. We've got Troika and Mork Borg and one Ring and Dune and uh, Honey Heist and all kinds of other things. So please go have a look at those. Oh, but that's our promo. That's our promo all sorted and out of the way. And now we can focus on the fun of, um, well, me tormenting my group of players mainly. Um, speaking of which, let's start with our first player today. It's John. Hi, John. Hi, Matt. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Uh, I I brought a banana up with me to eat before we went live, but that was an exciting noise. It was. I'm very sorry. One of my wires. Everything's going wrong. Basically, good, I haven't good. eaten my banana. I'm making weird noises. This is what happens when you don't eat your banana in time. Yeah. Um. So, where were you in the 80s, John? Um. I think the the term is a twinkle in my father's limbo. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, I was going to ask that of everyone in the group as like a funny thing, but I actually think that that's going to be the answer for three out of four of the players. Uh, but I'm going to ask it anyway, out of commitment to the bit, and then people will hopefully perceive it as a kind of like Stuart Lee, you know, extended non joke rather than just me completely failing. That's um, a very good way of the group. to make like two people feel very old. Yeah, but I'm one of them, so that's fine. Um, that's absolutely fine. Um, so, John, uh, you know what? I'll bring on the players one by one, and then we'll talk about the characters. I think I think we'll do that, because then people can interact with each other on them. So, um, our second player tonight is Steve! Look at that. Two stream managers, three stream managers, all in one room. Far too much power. Yeah, that's, um, something's going to explode. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Hi, Matt. I'm, I'm fine, thanks. Where were you in the 80s, Steve? I I've no idea. I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember at all. But you, you did exist, remember. right? I did. I did exist. You yeah. did exist. I did exist. Yeah, we exist. I mean, how bad was it that you can't remember what you were doing for an entire decade? It's not that bad if you're really young. Mm, if you're less young, it's <clears throat> then that's the problem, probably. <laughs> but um, there we go. Um, 
me and Steve has actually talked about the 80s before on uh, on our Discord copiously in terms of how everyone now, because of the way things are presented in this nostalgic fashion, thinks that the 80s were like day glow and like neon and like really colourful. Um, whereas the actual reality of it was that the 90s were like that mm. and the 80s were horror. In my head, the 80s is one horrible, horrible grim sequence of beige and brown things things that were usually stuff like ashtrays and like it, it was just grim the 80s was grim i suppose it depends where you were but <laughs> maybe yeah, the 70s were it was in... kind of yeah held over from the 70s so it got better over time but yeah it wasn't yeah but mm. there we go there we go so let's enjoy playing in the 80s now now mm. that we've declared how, how how grim it is um let's bring on our third player our third player is inga hi inga hi hello Inga, where were you in the 80s? For like two weeks in the 80s, I was around in a... So there right, you go. Know, I That's just right. made it in. Yeah. Uh, did, did you have a good two weeks or...? Uh, I'm sure it was grand, yeah. Yeah, it was really <laughs> good. Really good. Solid. Probably cold. Yeah. Uh, probably cold. Probably cold. Probably cold and you were probably quite... You were probably quite loud. Probably. Uh, yeah. By all yeah. accounts, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um, right, let's bring on our final player. Um, it's Sam. Uh, that Sam, that one there, in case you thought it might be the other Sam. But no, oh. it's that Sam. Um, sorry to anyone disappointed. Yeah, I'm sorry to and congratulations to anyone Sam. pleasantly surprised, just to cover <laughs> both bases. Um, Sam, where were you in the 80s, Sam? I was, I was, do you want the, the gross biological explanation? Or... Please, always. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll skip out on that for now. Okay. Probably, probably some molecular complexities prior. <laughs> sure. You yes. Sure. Sure. Um, <laughs> the point is, hello everyone. Hello to these wonderful players. Um, we will go around now and we'll talk. A, I'll talk a very little bit about the setting of Tales from the Loop first. Um, but. Uh, we won't go into it in too much detail, partly because there isn't that much detail to it. Um, but what we will say is that Tales from the Loop, which has um, two alternate locations you can use as default settings, although you could kind of set it anywhere, um, is set in a retro-futurist version of the 80s, where certain sci-fi-ish type technologies, um, such as what are called magnetrine uh, vehicles, which are great big hovering ships, um, and robots, and uh, various other kind of like not wor particularly world changing technology exists. Um, and the fallout for this is that lots of weird science stuff happens. Um, and this is what leads to the mysteries and like um, the, the characters getting involved in it. Um, but really, it's a world very, very much like our own in the 80s, only overlaid with this sort of retro chunky sci-fi aesthetic, which absolutely sums up Simon Stalinhag's art. Um, basically, any art you see in this that isn't a character portrait is Simon Stalinhag's art. Go check it out. He's excellent. Um, and the two settings that there are, there's uh, one which is kind of the default, uh, which is in Sweden, and apologies for any mispronunciation of Swedish names that we do, um, but is set on the Malloran Islands, on Lake Malloran, which is near Stockholm, and that's the setting we're going to be using. Uh, there is also a Boulder City setting for anyone out there who literally cannot play a, 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 a This World game if it's not in America. Um, which is no criticism, it's, you know, people are familiar with it. It just it just always tickles me that in these things it's like, here's the interesting setting, and then here's America. Um, but there we go. Which is not I'm not I'm not having a go. Just it's it's fine. Um so this is where our characters find ourselves, and uh, it should be worth noting that the oldest, I believe the oldest age you can be as a character in Tales from the Loop, is it sixteen? Can you be sixteen in it? I think it's I think 15. Was it 15? 15, yeah. It's like 11 to 15, right? Um, so you all play kids. Uh, kids in retro, futurist, 80s, chunky, sci-fi Sweden. Um, yeah, it's another one of those games. Um, <laughs> so here we are. Um, and with that in mind, let's start introducing our characters, um, probably in the order that we brought people on in. John, do you want to tell us about Nicholas, please? So Nicholas is a very enthusiastic uh, rocker. Um, he he mostly wears like a, a beat up denim vest that 
is obviously just a jacket that's had the sleeves torn off and a bootleg Pink Floyd t-shirt that probably says Punk Floyd or something and he thinks it's clever. Uh, and he just got an electric guitar for his birthday a few months ago and and made it his life's effort to start a band and revolu revolutionize music. And it's, you know, there's noise. S sound is produced, which yeah, um, qual basically. qualifies you as a band, um, essentially. So, yeah. And I say that from, from my own teenage years. Um, they, they were bands. No one can ever take that away from me. Um, so that is Nicholas, also known as Ziggy. Um, a, a obscure reference there. Um, I wonder if anyone could pick up on that. And next, uh, we have Steve. Steve, tell us about Christian. Sure. So, yes, uh, Christian um, is uh, more of a bookworm type character, not really. Um, in uh, in the right sort of uh, yeah very out of place in terms of uh, this this band, but yeah so he's uh, thin and lanky, uh, chunky woolen sweater and jeans, um, totally you know not not punk at all, um, satchel full of books, notepads things like that, and a small dog as well who uh, 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 named it Ruffer that uh, follows me around uh, most places, um, but I do have a, a bass bass guitar and for some reason. Um, I've uh, I've taken it upon myself to uh, join this uh, this group. Not great technically, but uh, you know, having a go. I don't. Th I mean, and and again, as a former bassist, you don't need to be competent. So, um, I think the important thing to ask here, Steve, is what mm. does Roffa translate as? Ah, oh, now you're asking. <laughs> We'll we'll come back to you. Yeah, that. give me give me we'll a second. You, I we'll let know, you but... Google translate that from Swedish. So, uh, Inga, why don't you tell us about Sussy? Sussy, Sussy. Yeah, uh, she is very tomboyish. She's um, twelve, so she's a couple years younger. Well, she's a year, year and a bit younger than um, Christian and Nicholas, um, but she does her best to pretend she's just like the older kids. Um, yeah, quite tomboyish, you know short like you know haircut short you know boy short kind of um ruffled hair um kind of mousy blonde um you know, sort of flannel boots um trying to look more like a slightly older teenage boy than than a 12 year old girl um she is the troublemaker of the group um i, I think she probably just demanded that she was going to play drums uh in ziggy's band um with I mean, I think her approach to it is much like my real life approach to karaoke, which is that enthusiasm is far more important than talent. Um, and that is her that is her life philosophy when it comes to music, I think. Um, she doesn't have a drum kit. Um, she's making do with what the things she can find Just or talk things. Paint, paint cans. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure um, if we, we said your role in the band, Nicholas, but I think it goes without saying that Ziggy played guitar. Z so. Ziggy does play guitar. Ziggy played guitar, yeah. And also sings. Yeah, but that's not fun. Sings. That's not a fun re yeah, lyrical reference. Mm, so no, let's, it doesn't matter, basically. Um, so, <laughs> Sam, let's uh, let's find out about Ida. Yeah, so Ida, although she's definitely uh, says everyone has to call her Spindle, which means spider, um, is a little 12-year-old. Uh, she is uh, tiny and just, just a little wiry thing. She seems to be all limbs and doesn't seem to have any body at all. Um, it's kind of a wonder she's even like moving around sometimes. She seems so t so little. Um, she's she's kind of always, she's got dark hair, dark eyes. She's always grubby. Um, she's a weirdo in the, the kind of uh, setting of the game, character, character archetype things. Um, she wears just like, um, black and white. I feel like she probably ends up looking a little bit goth accidentally just by being covered in mud and just wearing black and white and not really caring very much. Um, goth by being covered in goths famously covered in mud. <laughs> well, you know, I was just imagining it just ends up splashed over her eyes and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> oh, I see. She's so uh, covered in mud that it acts as eyeliner. Yeah, she never, she never, ne she never washes. All right, All right. <laughs> yeah, never washes. Just crusted mud around the so eyes. She's like forced into it sometimes. You can, you can imagine. That's um, very goth. <laughs> um, I mean, she doesn't think spiders wash, so why does she need to wash? 
um, and uh, uh, she has she was given a keyboard by her dad about two years ago, and um, she can't really play it at all. She just uses it to make cool sounds. But having a keyboard is immediately a great kind of qualification to get in a band, as far as she can see it. So she turned up, and that's how she ended up playing. Fair enough. So there we go. With these uh, these four individuals uh, all play together in Nicholas's garage. Um, well, I say they play together. In in reality, about five percent of their time in the garage is spent trying to play their instruments badly or write songs even more badly, uh, and the rest of the time um, is spent, you know, talking shit, uh, listening to other people's far better music. Uh, watching horror and action movies on a small kind of battered VCR and uh, uh, television uh, that uh, Nicholas has inherited from his parents in there, and um, probably also play, playing a bit of Monsters and Mazes um, uh, with little little graph paper dungeon maps and um, badly badly warped lead figurines. So. Tales from the Loop, let's start. And I think we're going to start. We're going to introduce each of our characters with like a little scene of their own. Um, and I think we're going to start with Sussie. So um, you, uh, as I think we've we've established kind of off camera, uh, one of your roles in the well, why don't you why don't you explain what one of your roles is in the uh, in the group? Uh, yes, uh, Sussie spends less time in school and more time out of it, exploring the world and, you know, finding things that she might be able to find. And um, very little parental oversight means that she kind of has quite free reign to sort of do what she wants to do, um, which it, I think probably started first off with just going through anything and that was left behind of her parents or um, uh, that she could, you know, take through any, anything that she wasn't supposed to be listening to or watching. Um, at her age was obviously immediately taken to her her new friends in the band um and uh, and then anything else that she could sort of quietly now about of um out of the local shops or anything that you know was maybe fallen out of someone's backpack at school on the rare occasions it did um so yeah her, her role is often sort of the acquirer of goods to enjoy absolutely and and with that in mind uh so, so you find yourself uh, with all your sources normally run dry and a, a practice coming up in Stenhamra video. Um, uh, you live in the town of Stenhamra on the Malaran Islands, and uh, Stenhamra video is a fairly typical video rental for the 80s. Uh, it has large windows and highlighted panels displaying inviting posters of movies with enticing red labels that read new or coming soon on the cover. Um, inside the shop, the carpet is grey and trampled, uh, the only colourless item within the shop's interior, which is otherwise decorated with those posters and uh, paper, various paper stands of upcoming or classic movies. You know, at the moment, maybe the ones that are out, of, out on display are there's... Uh, just as you go in, there's like a, a big one of Jaws with a sh shark kind of coming up you know, on that classic poster. And further inside by the counter is um, Arnie is there in kind of like leather jacket and shades uh, with a big Terminator logo over the top of him. And uh, the different racks are uh, nicely divided into shelves about as high as older children. Uh, but for the young ones, the top shelf is still a little bit out of reach. Um, there is a checkout counter with an overview of the store um, that has a small TV on it, um, which the woman who works here, the woman who works here now and has taken over the place relatively recently, um, is often distractedly glued to watching a movie. And uh, while you're in there, so see, you find yourself in a staring competition, one that you definitely cannot win because it's a staring competition with the cover of a video you haven't seen before on one of the shelves. On that cover, there is a skeleton with eyeballs turned to the side, leering and staring at you. And the, the very, very intriguing and appealing title of Evil Dead 2 written next to it. You haven't heard this movie. You definitely haven't heard of Evil Dead 1. Um, and you uh, have only just encountered this 
and you have never wanted to watch anything more in your entire life. Um, you can see that there's like this copy of it that's on the shelf um, has must have been misplaced down here by someone because the other copies of it are definitely on the top shelf. Um, the video store currently, it's actually quite busy. Um, there are a few people kind of scattered around, including a couple of people you wouldn't normally expect to see there. Um, so the chances of swiping it are pretty minimal. And also, to be honest, on a couple of occasions you've been here in the last couple of months, that new woman who runs the place has been quite nice to you. Um, so, you know, there you go. Um, just double check, it's, it's kind of like, with the, with the VCR, with the, the actual tapes, it'd be in the, the boxes on the shelves, or is it the kind of place you have to go up with the empty box and they'll... You'd have to go up with the empty box yeah. to get it filled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes people leave them in accidentally, but yeah. I will check that first. <laughs> sure, yeah, yeah. Are you, are you doing that kind of, trying to do that sneakily? Um, I don't think so. Like, I think just, just, like, like, just with the confidence that I should be opening this, so there's not yeah, there's sure. anyone looking at me. Yeah. Um. So you you do that and you kind of crack it open with that wonderful little like noise that they made. Uh, see, Steve's nodding. Yes, I remember the videos. Um, <laughs> most of these people probably. Remember. <laughs> um, it kind of opens up. It it is unfortunately empty. Um, as you do that, uh, a shadow falls across you, and uh, there is an adult you haven't seen before kind of standing uh, next to you, looking down at w at w where you've got the, the open copy of Evil Dead 2, um, and he kind of looks down at you. He's, he's dressed very in a very kind of preppy fashion, you know, with a, um, a cardigan and a button-up shirt, um, and he just kind of looks down at you with a, a stern look, and says, "Well, I I hope you're not thinking of of renting that. It's in, entirely inappropriate for you. And these these kind of films they they have damaging effects on on young minds. You can um, see, and you haven't seen anything like this before. He's got quite a large uh, badge pinned onto his cardigan with like an, an image of a blue flower on it. You." It's very noticeable, like he's a member of something, but you haven't heard, you don't know what it is. Thanks for your unasked opinion. <sighs> he uh, kind of walks away a bit, muttering about, you know, youngsters, elders, respect, that kind of thing. But doesn't immediately seem like he's going to cause trouble for you. Um, I will hang on to it and find uh and maybe find another another less controversial some, something else that's like um i can't think of something off the top of my head at the moment but um so, some something that's maybe like a comedy or something yeah maybe maybe like a rom-com or something like when you're a classic sure yeah 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 something um uh something that would be like you know the stereotype of yeah yeah, yeah very, very like classic rom-com so yeah, I, I'm going to go with, <laughs> I'm just, all the while you were saying that, I was racking my brains oh for my an God. 80s rom-com, and I'm going to pro propose Joe versus the Volcano, which I think uh, will have come out before this. It's Tom Hanks film. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm uninterested really in the rom-com, but I will take the two with me up to the, the counter. Sure. Um, um, so, uh, no, you carry on if you want to. Uh... Actually, no, I, I will also pick up something that is um, uh, whatever the latest, like, Disney is or something, you know, something that is, like, probably even more kiddie than, than my, my age would, sure. be, like, you know, be associated with really, but something that is, like, pure and innocent as, or, you yeah. know. Yeah, let's go with that. Basil the Great Mouse Detective. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will take the three up um, and, uh, and 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 say to to the woman um, uh, that basically that I'm 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 here for the this, this, essentially I'm trying to like I, I I'll hope this is my sort of well what was maybe my general pattern is to get something you know one each for the family one for mom one for dad and one for little old me and I'm yeah. just the one who's you know doing the chore here and I'm obviously not watching all of these films I'm just sure you know, absolutely. Um, so you walk up uh, to the counter. The um, 
Behind the counter is hung uh, an old translucent plastic cover with red splashes, a, a tribute to uh, the film Psycho. It covers a doorway which leads to the uh, kind of mythical world of the storeroom area beyond, which with your, with your rudimentary perception of some things, you are aware that even less kid-friendly films are available back there. Um, maybe in genres you've never heard of before, um, and uh, which people always seem to be very secretive about when they uh, when they leave out of the front door with them in in brown plastic in brown paper bags. Um, but uh, the young woman uh, sat at the counter, uh, as I've said. Um, she's only started running this uh, video store a couple of months ago. You were kind of dimly aware that her name's Ellen, um, and then you realize why you know that, uh, which is because behind the counter, just pinned up um, on the wall, is a uh, like a, a whiteboard that has Ellen's recommendations uh, written on it in uh, sort of blue Sharpie uh, and listed quite co coincidentally, maybe, um, a number of films which you and your friends have watched and enjoyed and quoted and uh, maybe had a couple of nightmares about, not that you'd ever um, admit to that in front of each other. Um, if, we're, if we're interested, the four on there currently are The Fly, Aliens, Lost Boys, and Prince of Darkness, um, which um, you pr presumably maybe approve of. Uh, Ellen herself, and I have a picture. Here is Ellen. Um, uh, she is, you know, uh, a woman in her mid to late twenties, although as a 12 year old, you probably think of her in that rough grab bag of every, every adult is about in about 40 years old. Um, uh, her complexion's pale, uh, the dark hair is a bit shabby, uh, and she wears big glasses and shirts with, um, music or horror movie motifs. Um, and as I say, she seems to have recently moved to Stenhamra where she took over, um, this place from uh, the previous guy who was a, a lot less cool seeming in your eyes. Um, she, uh, as she kind of, uh, she's watching something on that TV over to one side, um, something with the, the sound mostly turned down, although you can hear there's a lot of gunfire in whatever it is she's watching. Um, she looks down and kind of like, uh, almost like absent-mindedly, like pirate, like looks out uh, across the the videos you've laid out, and her brow kind of wrinkles a little bit as she say, sees Evil Dead Two. Um, the uh, there's uh, a kind of raised voice from the other side of the um, video store as uh, the man who accosted you earlier calls out. Yes, yes, she was looking at that earlier. I think she's entirely too young for that, don't you? I, I mean, I'm not sure it should be stocked here at all, if I'm being perfectly honest. Well, you can tell my dad that, because it's my dad who wanted to watch it, actually. So, thanks. Uh, Ellen kind of looks down and says, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and she says this quite loud. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not... Even if it's for your dad, I, I, I think I uh, legally can't entirely... <sighs> you know what? She kind of puts them uh, back behind the, the counter and you hear like clicking and clacking as she um, fills up with, you know, the videos that are stocked behind then, puts them out and, and taps them and says, um, you know what, this will this, be fine. Your, your dad will enjoy this. It's, it's you know... <sighs> I just, I just can't with, with, with videos that are rated so adult. I'm sorry. Well, on your, you know, on your card. Yeah, it's just my dad asked for this one specifically, and he, you know, he can't make it out here himself. So, and my mum's working. I, I know, kiddo, but he's got to come in himself for that one. Sorry. You can, you can see the, the guy over at the back, kind of looking quite smugly satisfied with himself. Uh, she slides the videos over to you and very clearly winks. Well, thanks for trying, miss. That's all right. See you again soon. I will skip out the door. Sure. Um, as you do skip out of the door, um, you... Um, skip past sort of 
another uh, individual who's dressed quite similarly uh, to the man inside, this time uh, a youngish woman, but in a very kind of like, you know, uh, button down um, floral pattern dress. She's handing out flyers to everyone going in and out of the video store. Uh, and she kind of reaches one out to you and then kind of sees that you're 12 and just kind of doesn't bother and holds it in. Interestingly, she's wearing another one of those blue flower pins. Um, why don't I get one? Oh, you can have one if you want. Okay. I just didn't... Thank you. Why didn't you give it to me before? And what is it if I then turn it and look at it? Um, it is a leaflet um, that is marked uh, Stenhemra... Um, uh, let me get the exact wording. The, the Stenhemra Parent Teacher Association, which has a logo of a blue flower um, and it is both advertising an upcoming presentation at the Stenhemra Cultural Festival which is something you very much know about it's something the town is very proud of um, and something which is broadcast nationwide on cable television every year and it's coming up in just a few days um, and uh, also basically declaiming that um, many of the videos stocked by Stenhemra video are unsuitable for young minds um, and really general consumption in general and uh, corrupting and devaluing the, the brains of our youth. Okay, yeah, I mean, if she starts to explain at all, I'll probably, the, is immediately seeing that, just interrupt her and just be like, oh, you're right, I'm not interested in this. But it was very rude of you to assume I wouldn't be and just hand it back and walk away. Amazing. Um, you hear her call out, typical, typical. You too. Um, as you walk off, I'm assuming you're you're cracking open the, the videos just to Yep, yeah, you're so the videos you have are Basil the Great Mouse Detective, um and um I think we said Joe versus Volcano, and you crack open the final one in anticipation. It's Evil Dead 2. Excellent. Um so off you go, probably on your way to Nicholas's house and the practice there and speaking of the Stenhamra cultural festival um it's you're in at the beginning of summer holidays now uh, a blanket of um sunny haze has dropped on the Malaran islands here in the summer of 1988 um and that the town seems even more quiet than it usually is in the uh sort of general rumbling hubbub that leads up to the cultural festival and we find ourselves with another one of our kids um ida would you be working on your cultural festival project at home or like in you know some of the like the you know the town hall areas and maybe a couple of church halls there's quite a lot of people there working on various things including a lot of the kids who are either you know artistic and theatre kids who are really really excited about the cultural festival or legions of other kids who would rather be anywhere else <laughs> but have been pushed into this mm -hmm. by yeah. well-meaning parents <clears throat> and teachers I can imagine. I, f I feel like uh, uh, Ida will definitely not be with the other kids working on their projects and will instead be like keeping hers absolutely secret somewhere like near her house, but not in her house because she's not sure. She's also not sure she can trust her family with this because they also might reveal the, the amazing secret surprises that she has in store. Um, so maybe she's got like a, a kind of tumble down shed somewhere nearby in like a place that she thinks, she thinks no one else knows about, which everyone can see from the road or something. Um, and she's she's currently in that tumble down shed, uh, trying to like bash together some old bits of scrap into the shape of what she thinks is going to be an amazing, fully mobile animatronics giant spider for the the festival. But presumably, any will be anything but that. Well, I don't um, think she really understands that animatronics need mechanisms. Need to electronic, she just, some if kind you of put mechanism things together and, enough, then yeah. robots move eventually. Yeah. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> um, would you have any objection to said um, little shack being on the shores of the lake? Absolutely not. No. Well, then here's here's the view from the lake. I just wanted to throw some Simon mm -hmm. Stahl and Hargard. Honestly, <laughs> um, you have no idea what those things are, or if they're even still relevant. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Malaran Islands, like much of Sweden, are covered with, um, you know, uh, both functional and non-functional uh, vestiges of the, the loop program. And you have no idea genuinely if these are performing some 
odd, obscure function within uh, the network of communication and power around Sweden, or whether they're just detritus that has been left. Either way, someone seems to be kind of floating over on a boat and attending to one of them. Nothing of any interest. You see kind of like Rick's energy, um, like uh, workers around all the time looking at stuff like this. But you're there in your shack. Why don't you, why don't you tell us exactly what you're doing with this? You know, what, are you welding? Are you just hammering bits of <laughs> yeah, uh, metal together? I'm not sure uh, Ida's dad has quite trusted her with a welder yet. Um, she She's kind of gathered tools from where she can. I think she's probably quite familiar with bits of tech like this because she quite frequently, a lot of the stuff she's building this from is just things she's scrounged from kind of stuff she's assumed is abandoned from the old technology. And maybe now and then she's kind of come to something and got, tried to pick it up and found out it's still making a noise or it's still attached by a wire. And then she's yeah, got still to humming or as some kind of big chunky power thing exactly. that vibrates as you do. And then she's done the typical child thing of suddenly running away and hiding behind a bush and looking at it for a while to make sure it's not following her. And then upon finding it isn't, has gone to find something else to scrounge. Um, so yes, probably quite a lot of what she's working on at the moment are those bits, half rusted and wrecked bits of mis mystery that are kind of hammered together mostly hammering i think so she's right now she's got kind of a, a hammer that looks way too big for her um she's kind of like you know just a you know like a, a mallet style thing she's whacking at this piece of uh just a, like a big gear she's trying to whack it into this kind of piece of plate metal just hammering it through the metal kind of trying to do the face of the thing it's got great big like fangs that's what she's working on at the moment no problem no problem and as you do that um you can uh you hear kind of like the the rumbling of some um summer storm in the distance over the lake um nothing that that seems kind of immediately a reason for it to start pouring down i'm assu i'm assuming that maybe if this is a little out of the way you're there maybe on a bike or something yeah that would be reasonable yeah i don't think i'm probably particularly far from my house but i probably cycle everywhere so that makes sense sure um Absolutely. Let us. Uh, nothing is particularly going to happen there. We just let's have like a little flavour of uh, of Ida there, and let's hop to Nicholas. Uh, Nicholas, maybe you are waiting for um, your friends to arrive in your garage, um, or at least making the place somewhat tidy for their um, for their arrival, or doing whatever. What What do you think is the main thing you would be doing in that garage at this moment, Nicholas? I think I will probably be like getting a bit of a head start on practice because uh, I, I really want like a new style to to show to the band to s s see if we want to pivot genres yet again. Uh, so I currently have on my little VCR and TV uh, alien playing, and I'm trying to one man write a movie score for it. And it's completely, completely out of like style for the, the quiet. It's mostly just weird finger picking and bending and just weird noises. Um, sure. But Ziggy's loving it. Yeah. Um, so um, there are two exits to the garage. One is like the, you know, the door that just leads into the the, the main the main hall of your house, and the other one is obviously the the garage door itself. Um, which of those do you think would be open or closed at this particular point in time? It's quite a warm summer's day, just so you know. I think the the garage door will be open because that's where people would usually come in through. Sure. Um, in that case, you hear uh, quite clearly. Um, uh, a knocking kind of on the front not on your garage door but on the front door um, uh, your parents are in um, and uh, a moment later you hear kind of like um, your your father open the door and kind of saying in sort of a, oh uh, hello can I help you uh, and you hear a, a voice um, perhaps a recognizable voice to someone else from earlier a man's voice saying oh yes hello uh, sir, um, I'm afraid I'm I'm not entirely sure of your uh, your name. We haven't seen you at any of the the parent teacher association meetings. Um, I don't suppose you've got a moment for us for us to talk to you about um, well uh, about har harmful media consumption in our town. Uh, are you carrying on playing through this? You have a kind of agreement with your parents that like you know practices you can turn up. But everything else has to be kind of, you know, I you think, can hear the conversation over it. Yeah, at the moment I've got 
um like my headphones plugged into the amp and i'm just hearing this over the top so you know not to bother big chunky else. headphones with like These coil i guess yeah with, like little curled coiled uh wires but oh the... it's getting very nostalgic for me um <laughs> at the mention of harmful media i sort of lower the headphones and sneak a bit closer to over here sure um uh you you hear your father say oh um i'm what media do you mean i'm not entirely sure oh well you must have seen these things these these video nasties mostly made in america i i i, I believe and all this this heavy metal music we're this is such a, a quiet happy little town and we're just worried that uh, your your father kind of cuts across the conversation and says yes i'm not i mean I, I know what you're talking about, but I'm just, I'm not really sure that those things are so much uh, of a problem. Oh, well, do, do you not care about your child's well, well-being, about their mental state after the consumption of all this? Um, you, I, I am actually just off out for a drive. If you just give me, sorry, what are you? I unplug my my headphones turn the volume up slightly too loud and start uh throwing down a couple of power chords sure anything in particular i know that uh, ziggy's favorite song is smoke on the water i mean sure yeah everyone can play smoke on the water so it's the first song he learned sure it's the first song everyone learned uh so as the chords of smoke on the water kind of break out um you you do hear whoever's on the doorstep going oh my word that, that see this is just yes we we are going out for an afternoon drive as a family now th thank you so much and the door closes um a moment later you hear kind of footsteps retreating away off onto the streets and you know what you see them walk kind of walk past your garage you live in quite a you know a suburban area and you see them walk past and kind of peer into the darkness of, of the garage inside it's it is the man i described earlier the man and woman from the video store from earlier uh, that i described and uh, the man kind of peers into the dark and probably vaguely sees you because it's so bright outside and just kind of shakes his head slightly and looks quite disapproving um about uh about a minute later there's like quite a quite a, a like a soft little knock on the um the door leading into the garage come in uh your dad kind of like clicks open the door and leans around and says um nikki you didn't did, did you just hear that hear what okay that that that's fine turn down a little bit okay okay he uh closes the door and um presumably you, have you lost yourself in smoke on the water now have you given up the idea of of scoring alien again <laughs> no like once once dad leaves and the rude man has disappeared and hopefully i'm loud enough to stop him from talking to the neighbors as well mm -hmm. uh i will go back to plugging my headphones in and um the scoring alien again sure um, well then, let us flicker across to Christian. Um, Christian, you uh, you do have to go over to Nicholas's soon for a practice, but in the meantime, you are at home now. Uh, based on my judgment of your character, but correct me if I'm wrong, I'd say Christian is likely to be on his bed with a book. Yeah, yeah. Do you it's, think that's yeah. about right? Being sure. surrounded by books is definitely a fairly common absolutely um so well christian why don't you tell us what you're reading uh, um i reckon i would be uh, i'd have found some books from the library about uh music theory i'm 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 learning you know trying to figure out what it is what it means to you know to, to play music because obviously um being part of the band i, I want to understand the fundamentals of it because that's really yeah. important Absolutely. And I think in doing so, because I, I think it's probably fair to say that Christian maybe feels like he doesn't have quite a grip on this music thing as much <laughs> as his friends. Um, and no. in do, in, in bit, picking up one book and reading one page um, unwittingly has become by far the most <laughs> uh, knowledgeable about music of all his friends. Um, so, yeah, while you're while you're doing that, um, 
you um, do you think that perhaps you might be listening to uh, a copied cassette tape of um, any number of things that that one of your other friends has brought to the garage and listened to, and that you you, you maybe feel a little bit duty bound to? Uh, oh sure, yeah, yeah, sure. So let's um, let's let's pick. Uh, give me, give me an eighties band that you think oh. the others might have um, might have thrown you away, Steve. Or do you want me to pick? God, one? You, you pick. Dealer's choice. I... <laughs> sure. Okay. Let's go with something that um, very that for most people would be considered quite tame, but for people of a certain disposition would be considered, mm. you know. Um, Beyond the pale. Let's go for Guns N' Roses, shall we? Uh, <laughs> let's say you're listening to, uh, to okay. a bit of Guns N' Roses. Um, probably quite modestly, because Christian's a bookish a bookish child, right? Just like there in a, on a little stereo, maybe. Mm. Um, uh, as you are doing so, you hear your uh, mother's footsteps coming up the stairs and a uh, gentle knock on your door. Uh, I will turn the music down. and uh, <clears throat> uh, Yes? Um, your mother kind of opens the door and says, "Oh, it's terribly, uh, terribly dingy in here, Christian. Um, it, it, are the curtains closed?" Mm, yeah, probably. I've got different. a little light for me book, but sure. Uh, you know. um, she walks over to the window and kind of <laughs> opens opens up those curtains uh, and says, "Oh." And you, Oh, you're not going to your noisy friend's house again this afternoon, are you? Well, you you said I should get out more. I'm uh, just meeting friends, you know. It's I know, but the, uh, they've got you listening to such angry music. I just worry. It's just music, Mum. It's it's not it's not angry. It's just. Well, I suppose if you say so. Look, um, I might not be. Uh, back when you come back, there's a parent teacher association meeting. I have to, I have to go to there. They've got quite big plans for this cultural festival, you know. Is your 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 little friend? Is she doing something for that? Did you say? Uh, she is. I'm not quite sure what the uh, what she's what she's doing, but uh... well, I hope it's a bit more respectable than what she did last year. <laughs> what did she do last year? <laughs> We will leave that up to the viewer <laughs> to determine. Marvellous. All right. Well, will you have a safe afternoon, Christian? And just, um, just, just think about what I've said, okay? I will. I will. You know, I will. All right. She, uh, she leans over and gives you a, 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 a very uh, kind of a peck on the top of the head, and uh, you hear her kind of walking out and, and getting ready and leaving the house. Um. Okay, shall we cut to the 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 practice? Um, and uh, you're all there in the garage. Um, is the I assume that the garage door comes down for these? You don't want your your horrible errors to be displayed to the <laughs> to the entire world walking past. And you know what I'm going to ask for. The first thing I'm going to do. We haven't had a roll yet. And I am going to ask everyone um, for a roll to see how well they're playing. Uh, they're playing the band's music. Um, John, would you like to uh, tell our lovely audience what the band is called for a start? Uh, so the band now and originally is called the Martian Tarantulas, which Ziggy thought was a very clever name. Uh, it's been other names in its short life, but it's currently back to the Martian Tarantulas. Sure. Um, so uh, we're going to roll one by one, and I'm going to ask you for different roles for everyone based on just what I think your character might be uh, using in order to express themselves musically. Let's start with Ziggy. And Z, can you give me a charm roll, please? Um, so for anyone who's interested, rolling in uh, Tales on the Loop is very simple. It's a whole big handful of D6 that you get from your attribute plus your skill, and you're just rolling and looking for sixes. That's it, basically. Sixes are successes. Okay, so my heart is five, my charm is three, and because I'm obviously using my electric guitar... You I'm are, which is your iconic dice. item, which gives you an extra two dice. Yep, go ahead. Uh, I only have five dice, so I'm going to roll twice. Okay. You should have... Um... 
Karen, it's fine. Uh, no sixes on the first load. Shame. One six in the second load. There you go. Um, <laughs> uh, why don't you describe to us how uh, how Nicholas succeeds in um, bringing over his charm in the form, you know, his his musical abilities. Basically, I am imagining you literally acting like you are on stage in front of hundreds of thousands. Uh, while you are there with a rough two foot space around you in the the garage to do so. Yes, Uh, I think as much effort is given to the the like the body language and also just the jumping around and for lack of a better term dancing even though it's not really music you would dance to uh, as is being put into the actual playing and singing. Yeah. More, more, it's far more about looking cool than actually hitting the chords. Uh, yeah, it's uh, if if the medium is the message, then surely the music isn't the most important bit of of the music. So you've got to you've got to focus on all all of it. Sure, absolutely. Um, this is why Sus was very keen to join the band because that seriously impresses her. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, speaking of speaking of sus, um, for your um, drumming on paint cans and um, utilizing a couple of small drumming bits that you may have lifted from the the, the school uh, music room, uh, Inga, why don't you give me a force roll, please, for just battering away as hard as you can on these things? Yeah, so that's a, I've got a four for body and a two on force, so that's six overall, uh, with two sixes on that. Oh, you know, you, you don't know whether you're keeping the rhythm, but you're making a hell of a noise, that's for certain. Um, and as everyone knows, as long as long as the drummer is making noise, you can kind of make music to it. So, um, yeah, you are battering away. Uh, one of the paint can lids is, like, slightly denting in, and you're, you're starting to get the sense of a bit worried of if this paint can is actually full, then um, it might batter open and spill over everything in a minute. But... For now, that that's a concern for a later minute, um, and therefore for a, a far flung future you can barely comprehend. Um, so, Christian, on your keyboards, um, I think Christian. Oh no, was no, bass, not your keyboard. Yeah. You are the bass player, I and think. Keyboard. Uh, you are, and uh, Christian, I would like a comprehend role for you, please for how much you have comprehended the music theory you were Lovely. reading yes. and constructed a, a well-paced, structurally sound <laughs> bass line upon which the rest of the random noise can Excellent. fix itself. Let's see. So uh, my mind is five, comprehend is three, so I'm rolling eight dice. And let's see how this goes. Oh, yeah, three successes. Christian is playing an actual bass line. Um, totally devoid, you know, unlinked to anything else. none of you but... can hear because it's the bass um, <laughs> in a teenage band and therefore is completely inaudible. Um, but for what it's worth, Christian is playing music. Um, this can be considered... I, I mean, just draw a line under the one shot there, I think. Mm. like that's, <laughs> um, We're not going to find anything more successful than that. So, um, Ida... Um, for your no doubt mildly experimental and, um, you know, pr- may, I, I can imagine you experimenting with playing the keyboard in different ways even, you know? Yeah, yeah, like maybe like, you know, playing it from different angles, different perspectives on the keyboard. Maybe the keyboard's up on the wall today. I'm trying out different things like that. Seeing if like it changes how it works. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Why don't you give me a tinker roll, please? Mm-hmm. Sure. I have a bit of that. So I've got three in tech and one in tinker. So it's four. And no sixes. <laughs> Clearly, no sixes. this is. Uh, now, obvi- obviously, this isn't a fundamental role, but it's worth asking. Um, do you <laughs> want to push the role or spend luck or anything like that to try and get nah, it? Or are you happy I, with your failure? I think I'm good. I think what 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 um what Spindle's done here is she's put it up on the wall, but she had someone help her put it up, and she, she's not really thought that it's actually a little bit too high. So she's actually like struggling a bit to reach the keys, but she doesn't want to admit that she's sure. put it up a bit too high. So, so you're just, just leaping up and every now and then yeah. this general kind of like guitar and drum caterwauling with a solid little thudding bass line underneath it is joined by a kind of <laughs> kind of noise as you're 
leaping up and playing away. Yeah, absolutely. Like to imagine you've got like the keyboard setting on like the tubular bells setting. Yeah, someone's asked me to change it, and I'm like, no, no, I like it like this, and that's because I can't reach the button to change it, not because I don't. <laughs> yeah. actually, I actually like it like this. Sure. Um, so that uh, goes uh, as as well as it can go. You know what? More successes than I would have anticipated. Um, so what you what you finish playing is almost it could almost be called a song, um, albeit well, maybe four songs. Um, and you know you you feel pretty satisfied when the 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 final chord rings out although and correct me if i'm wrong john i imagine that that nicholas is definitely one for improvised little guitar solo endings that may or may not massively irritate everyone else in the band Um, i mean i'm speaking from deeply ingrained experience (laughs) here i mean it is a prog band sort of so prog punk right yeah conceptual prog punk prunk I hate that word. Okay, but it's probably what it's called. Yeah. (laughs) There we go. Um, All right. Uh, Yeah, you you finish playing, uh, and the the instruments inevitably probably don't go away, but are probably like rested to one side. Uh, Maybe uh, Nicholas's uh, parents um, bring in some some kind of snacks for you all. Some wonderful eighty snacks that are just full of the worst things for you uh, in the world. E-numbers and um, mm, sodium galore. Um, just as much MSG as you can shove into your filthy little mouths. Uh, and uh, as that's happening, you get over, obviously, the um, uh, the customary mocking of, of Nicholas for being called Nicky by his parents. Um, and then what are we doing? What are, what are we doing as a group? You you guys walk through how the rest of the the rest of the afternoon goes for me. Well, I would of course at some point like to demonstrate my fantastic musical scoring abilities. Um, I will probably like fast forward or rewind to a, a very key point in a probably the chest buster scene. Um, and be like, look, look, guys, like this is, it's just opened up an entirely new inspirational, conceptual, like we could, we could make our own movie and then score it, or we could like get other movies and score them. And, and it would, it's just like a completely new direction. And it's, yeah, it's mostly just one big power chord when the thing bursts out of the chest. <laughs> um, but Ziggy is completely enamored with it. It's like or, we should find more movies to do this with. I was going to say we could try that with a new movie. And Ooh. guess what? And you guys are probably used to this pattern because since the new person came in and I was less sure about whether or not I could get movies and I was trying this whole, I'm getting one each for the family nonsense. Um, so you've probably seen it do this before. I just pulls out the first one. It's like, and Basil, the great mouse detective. <laughs> or Joe versus the volcano. <laughs> These are boring. <laughs> oh, and I'll just like spill it open and chuck it, chuck it like over towards the um, whoever is closest to the VCR. Evil Dead Two, my friends, this is the one. I don't know what the hell it's about, but I think it's the one. Spindle is cool. Go we haven't seen the first one though. So, <laughs> <laughs> see, that was a. That was actually a wonderfully ironic statement, but we won't get into that. <laughs> oh, I hope this film's like a five-minute recap. <laughs> Don't watch the films in the order that they tell you to watch them. That's fine. Yeah, for any yeah, I feel like explaining that for him. Evil Dead Two is basically a remake of Evil Dead, yeah. um, a much better one. Mm. But, yeah. Um, so. Um, you put on Evil Dead 2, and let me tell you, um, probably all of you are, are really enjoying it while also very clearly worried about how much you're going to sleep tonight. Um, Spindle actively hides in various places throughout the garage during the film, but he's always watching, is just hiding from behind something in the room. Sure. Um, so, uh, you're obviously, there, uh, as this is happening, Nicholas, are you presumably like twiddling on your guitar as you're trying to like improvise a score for it over the top of that? I think I start 
Um, but then as soon as the like Bruce Campbell gets the chainsaw out, he's well. I think, like, I think, yeah, I, I think like uh, when we reach the point where Bruce Campbell is chainsawing the headless floating demon zombie, you're probably you probably your interest has has left music at that particular. I was point thinking before the bit where he starts chainsawing his own hand off, and at that okay. point yep. the the guitar is just sort of sure. forgotten. Sure, it's just like this is amazing sure um so uh we will draw a veil over over the kids there at their their band practice and we will pick up again a uh a couple of days later and uh you know what we're gonna do a bit of kind of a randomization of scenes now which is fun we're going to have uh, a kind of random encounter um, for one of you, and I'm going to just roll a die here of something that happens the next day. Uh, let's have that. Or maybe the cat. Maybe we'll have a random encounter for the cat. Um, so this is a random encounter for Nicholas. Nicholas. Um, shall we do that? No, I won't do the... Ra Sorry, these actually don't work particularly well in a random order. So let's instead. <laughs> sorry, um, I was going to go all freeform and cool GM there, but no, we'll do it in the order that makes sense. Um, instead, we will have a random encounter for Ida. Ida, tell me something you'd be doing the next day. It's summer holidays. You have no nothing to do other than presumably do your work for um, uh, for the crafting festival, the culture festival. I should definitely say. not doing that. I think I'm walking around town looking for like I think maybe I've had enough of walking the forest looking for scrap and I'm walking around town seeing if anyone's discarded anything they definitely don't want that's made of metal. Sure. Absolutely. Um why don't you give me a, a role for that for kind of nosing around? Why don't you give mm -hmm. me an investigate role? Oh yeah. It's a nice roll. Find. Seven dice. I got a six. Absolutely. You know what? Well, you tell me what you find. Uh, I think I find someone's old, abandoned, rusted bike, but the chain part and the, the mesh there looks perfect for, like, you know, attaching the antennas to each other or something. Sure. Those those antennas that spiders often have. Yeah, the spider antennas. The well spider antennas. Spider part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, as you're doing this, you found this, and let's say it's just like, you know, there's an old fence... And it's just like been like chained up there, but chained up there probably like years ago, and it's gone to rust and crap by now. And you're just kind of there uh, trying to fiddle around and get get bits of it loose. Uh, and as you do so, you see, um, like you hear not not a hubbub, but you hear kind of some some voices of kind of unexpected voices of people walking down this quite quite quiet road. Mm -hmm. And as you look over, you see that there's a group of um, sort of nine people walking down. Um, walking down the road, kind of handing flyers out to people, all dressed quite conservatively and preppy, all wearing those blue flower badges on and kind of like handing flyers out to people walking past. And some of the people kind of stop and like talk to them a little bit. And some of the people kind of look and sort of shake their head and, and kind of tuck, tuck the flyer in their pocket. At least one person they hand it out to, you see kind of walking uh walking down the road who has kind of like he's an older teenager from your school with like long uh kind of greasy hair and uh who's always wearing like black t-shirts and jeans and kind of uh takes the flyer and reads it for a second and kind of reads it kind of you can see him kind of like mouthing it out loud and after they go past kind of scrunches it up and throws it uh over into someone's garden and walks off um they don't seem to have kind of noticed you um at all um, but I would like you, please, to give me a, uh, a comprehend roll. How is your mm -hmm. comprehend? Uh, let me have a look. I have five total, four mind, one comprehend. Yeah, let's let's go with that. Mm -hmm. Yep, two sixes. Okay. Um, it takes you a moment, but it's just something, just a little weird thing you notice. Mm -hmm. They're walking, there are nine of them walking along, and they're literally walking in a three by three kind of like little group. And mm -hmm. you just kind of go, that's weird. They're basically, they're like in lockstep, mm -hmm. like 
feet falling at exactly the same time. And as they come past you, it almost, you know, it almost sounds like marching. Mm-hmm. And it just seems odd. Spindle immediately mutters under her breath, <gasps> They've made robots that look like humans. And then she tries to sneak after them if she can now follow them, assuming they haven't seen her. Sure, absolutely. Why don't you uh, give us a sneak roll? See if you do mm-hmm. that. Yep. So that's two body, two sneak. The only body thing she could do. I did not get a six. <laughs> sure. You, uh, you can't, uh, sorry, are you pushing the roll? Or no, anything like I'm not that? no, no, no. <laughs> um, you, you like kind of like, you managed to wrench the chain off and kind of like um, sort of scamper along the, the, the fence after them. Uh, and uh, a kind of uh, an older man at the back, kind of maybe in his 60s or so, uh, kind of turns around and sees you just so quickly. So <laughs> really, really quickly. I, I think Ida will, will this, when she's seen, she will like freeze, like like she's like, maybe they haven't seen me, and then realize he's looking and just sprint away as fast as she What can. are you doing back there? Uh, come back. Ah. <laughs> Kind of no interest in following you or anything like that. You weren't doing anything wrong, that, but that's like, not what know. that's not what Ida Ida thinks. This man will now kill her, and she's going to sure, sure, absolutely. You remember she like left her bike nearby after a while, and then worries about how she's going to go get it back with the machine people there. Sure, absolutely, yeah, I love it. It's great. Um, so uh, there we go, and let's um, let's switch to another one of our kids now. Let's switch to uh, Sus. It's two. It's the next day now. It's two days later. You know what that means. Videos have got to go back. I'm assuming that copy of Evil Dead Two has taken a bit of a battering. Uh, yes, and none of them have been rewound. For shame. For shame. Um, Even the ones that we didn't actually watch. <laughs> Wow. Somehow have ended up. Yeah, they've been played a little bit because you know we had to you know switch these switch tapes at some point to pretend we were watching Basil the Great Mouse Detective instead or something. You yeah, know. absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. Evil Dead Two. Many many of these films you might get away with pausing when the parents come in. No, no, definitely, definitely not. Um, the even the most uh, obscuring of juddering, um, juddering artifact lines will not disguise what kind of film Evil Dead 2 is. So, um, uh, I'm just kind of walking along the street, what's your, what's your mood at this? Are you feeling kind of glum at it or, or just kind of determined maybe you're just going to take it out again? Um, yeah, I think feeling a little bit more hopeful that actually this this new person, Ellen, seems pretty cool and actually... Yeah, this might this might be all right. I might have my in at the video store still. Um, so I think you know, mildly optimistic. Um, if I've if I've still seen some of those um, parent teacher people around, um, they're probably you know my new enemy number one. Um, mm-hmm. but if, I might, I, might pick, I don't know if they've got posters up or anything like that. But if they do, they're being torn down whenever she walks past or sure, um, well, or otherwise kind of defaced. You know what? I'd say that there aren't posters specifically for them, but there are plenty of posters up for the uh, Stenhamra Cultural Festival. And you've started noticing that, um, unlike last year, at the bottom of those, which are all very kind of pastel, kind of like, you know, minimalist uh, pastel design that could never offend anyone, which is fairly usual for the Cultural Festival. But uh, these ones this year are coming with a um, uh, marker at the bottom saying in association with the Stenhamra Parent Teacher Association and one of yeah. those little blue flowers. Probably marker or spray paint or whatever she can get her hands on, whatever she might have to hand on a particular day. Um, just trying to cover up that bit of like she sure, sure to face the whole poster, but just try and cover off cover up that little bit. That like bit. Te- yeah. I think you could just tear the bottom off. I think that's yeah, like yeah, actually probably just perfectly tear perfectly doable. Um, well, as you're doing that, you're walking down uh, one of the main streets of Stenham Ra, and there's plenty of these posters around that you can just quickly quickly rip the bottom off. And as you come to the corner of the video store and you kind of reach out towards one and to rip one off, you glance over at the video store, and something is. A miss. Um, the video store seems quite much darker inside than it normally is. Normally, it's got kind of bright lights and it's got like a neon sign in the in the window, kind of you know, um, with Stenham Ra video written on it and things like that. It seems um, like those lights aren't on, and also um, outside, kind of stepping out 
uh, briefly, uh, seemingly maybe stepping out to have a smoke before going back inside, is that man who was in there before with one of those badges on. And you can see other individuals moving around inside. And the sign on the door has flipped to closed. But people are still, a couple of people are still going in and out. And they all seem to be those kind of preppy, conservatively dressed individuals with their badges. Um, maybe from uh, before, like any other previous explorations, like is that, do, would I know of any kind of back way in or any other, like is it it's sort of, part of like a, almost like a terrace sort of block or would it be a standalone building or? Um, well, let's, you know what, let's have a, um, let's have a prior investigate role from you to like find out uh, how, how much you know about the layout of the building in the street how about that yeah um i have only two dice to roll for this so we'll see no successes okay. um yeah I, I i don't think i'll push it or anything i think i think i'll leave it as that i think i'll maybe just try and like stay back then and just like watch them from somewhere fairly i mean i'm not gonna like make huge efforts to like hide i mean it's the middle of sure. the day presumably but um but yeah just try and stay somewhere quiet and just like watch and try and figure out what the hell they're doing sure absolutely um uh what one thing i will say is yeah you, you don't know you don't pay attention to these things it's only in in the moment when you might um realize that you want a, an exit out of somewhere or whatever that you scramble for a doorway um but um can we just have a quick um round check of who has the highest investigate score here because i i just seem to have quite a high one uh, mine would be seven. Eight, five. Yeah, maybe maybe your friends know um, the layout of this place. You certainly don't. Um, in the meantime, why don't you give me a comprehend roll to try and sort of like um, grok a bit what, you know, what, what they're up to there. That's only one die I can roll. <laughs> <laughs> Sus is a person who lives in the moment. Uh, that's a five. Sure. Yeah, this is beyond Sus's Sus's <laughs> mental pay grade here. Um, yeah. So, do you do you only have one point in mind? Yep. Wow. Um, yeah, I like the <laughs> idea that it's not that Sus is like an idiot or anything. It's just that she just exists in a world without higher thought. You know what I mean? Uh, a, a being of raw instinct. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, thinking is that that's it's reading things about the past, it's contemplating the future. Sus lives in the present. Yeah, absolutely. What is in front of her right now? Who knows? Yeah, you can't figure out what they're doing, but it, it strikes to you that it definitely comes under the banner of no good. Um, and it certainly doesn't, you know, Ella didn't seem to be the kind of person to want lots of people in and out of her store. And what's with the clothes sign? I think I might charge up to the door or like, you know, walk up to the door and like, I mean, it's, it's this close, but people have been going in and out. So I think I'll just try and walk in and see if I can open the, if the door will open. Sure. Um, in the time that you've been observing, like the people basically like there always seems to be one person stood outside. Mm -hmm. um, and in the time that uh, you've gone, the, the guy you saw before is now inside. And as you walk up, you can see that there are like a fair few people in there kind of like puttering about and they seem to be like taking videos off shelves and a couple of them seem to be kind of walking into that back room or walking out of that back room and there's a woman by the door um quite kind of like a, a large matronly woman who as you approach the door kind of like stand takes a step and stands directly in front of it and says it's, it's closed young lady well it's normally open now and i've got videos to return well it's closed You'll have to come back another time. But I'm going to get charged my fees if I don't return them now. No, no, they'll understand. It's fine. But it's closed. Off you go. Well, who are you to say that? You don't own this video store. It's kind of Ellen's point to tell me if I'm going to get fees or not. Look, at this point, I have to say, I have to think that you are talking back to me, young lady. Off you go. Yeah, it kind of looks like you guys are stealing some videos out of the store right now. Well, why don't you go report us to the police then if you're so worried? Well, yeah, maybe I will just go do that right now. What's your name? I think I'd better report you. What's your name and your parents' name? Uh, I'm not the one who's being reported to the police. I think I need your name so that the police can come and find you because you're the one who's stealing videos. 
I'm not putting up with this anymore and I won't be responding. Wow, that's real mature. Just literally staring off into the distance. Uh, yeah, I think, not sure what Sauce is going to do with that one. Uh, yeah, I think she'll probably, um, she'll hang on to the video, I guess. It means, uh, at the very least, the bright side, she gets to keep hold of Evil Dead, uh, Evil Dead 2 for the time being. Sure, and Basil, I'm a great mass detective. Which, um, I'm, to be fair, some bits of that were pretty scary too, so. Joe versus a volcano. <laughs> Rattigan, or <Yes>. or <laughs> unpleasant. <laughs> I am delighted that at least one other person here has seen Basil Grey Mass Detective. Oh, yeah. And that scared me actually as a kid. <laughs> it scared me as a kid. So, yeah. Um... <laughs> I, I love Sus so mm. yeah. <laughs> Um So, I guess, I guess Sus is, at least for the moment, defeated. Um, would it be safe to say, and not in an obvious GM way of trying to bring the party together, um, would it be safe to say that you might retreat to wherever your friends are hanging out? Yeah, to she's not actually going to go situation. to the police. She'll go report it to her friends. <laughs> yes, the, the real would, police. Spindle um, would absolutely have run straight to her friends after running away from the scary machine men too. So. Sure, absolutely. Well, why don't we pick up... I, I, I see no reason why this wouldn't be also in the garage. Um, so let's say that the garage is there. N Nicholas, you're in the garage doing whatever you might be doing. Um, and the, the garage door is open. Let's say let's say Christian's already there for whatever reason. Well, why don't you two tell me what you're doing? What would Nicholas and Christian be doing in the garage? Uh, well, I reckon I would be... Uh, so my, my dog's here too. Um, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having flashbacks to, to the film. But I'm trying to rationalize that with little sketches of how they did what they did. And you know, uh, like stop motion stuff. Trying to work and, out the special yeah, effects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Just, just to take the edge off, you know, the recurring visions of, of the, you know, <laughs> yeah. popping eyes, and... flying limbs, and stuff. Um, well, why don't we? Uh, first of all, very actually crucially important question that has been uh, posed in chat, Steve. Uh, what mm. breed of dog is Rafa? So uh, Rafa is a kind of a, a, a mongrel terrier. So small, you know. Um, Willful, very willful. I was very much hoping that that would be the response because in my head, a mongrel terrier is the the dog a kid has in the 80s. And I don't know if that's primarily inspired by the dogs I saw around in the 80s or the book Good Omens or, or what, but it's definitely, definitely the notion I have. Um, so, yeah, and Nicholas, how about you? Uh, I think Nicholas is not at all helping with um, Christian's trauma uh, and is like sort of flicking through the Monsters and Mazes monster manual um, and half-heartedly writing out ideas for uh, an Evil Dead 2 themed uh, role-playing story that is blatantly just a rip-off of the film. Um, but with e even more fantastical monsters turning up. And of course, everyone is armed with chainsaws and shotguns. Sure, absolutely. Um, so uh, let's find out who arrives first, uh, running uh, running themselves ragged along the streets. Um, Ida and Sus, can you both give me a move roll, please? I'll see who gets more successes. No successes. I got a six on my two dice roll. There we I had go. five and I got none. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Spindle's very fast when running away. <laughs> Spindle is nimble. Um, <laughs> so um, Spindle comes um, flailing down the street, all um, limbs and um, kind of whir whirling spindly body parts. Um, and yeah, you, you come bounding into the garage, take it away. Uh, so I'm panting and somehow even dirtier than normal, and I come running in, and I'm holding a like a bike chain and a bit of the the cog, and I stop and I go, uh, 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 uh. oh yeah, machine men, machine men, they're machine men. Has anyone else seen the machine men and women, machine men and women? What? Oh, is this is this your your culture project? No, no, no. That's oh, God. 
I told you what that was. I already forgot. Yeah, it's it's machine. No, the people going around town. There's monster men going around. Metal men going around town. What? Yeah, they're they're dropping off um, leaflets. I think people looked. Uh, some people looked angry about it. They but have yeah, leaflet delivering there robots. Are monster men delivering leaflets around <laughs> but, town. But they're, they're walking Call weird. Call the national guard. Did you see that? That like they're walking all together. What? Spindle, I have no idea what you're talking about, but it sounds really cool. And tell me more. <laughs> you know how? You know? You, you know how they they've like made loads of new robots in the last few years. Well, I've heard. I've heard they were going to make one that looked like a person. It's a secret. Don't tell anyone. But I think they've done it. And I think they're introducing them. And they haven't told anyone. It's like an experiment or something. And now they're going around town uh, dropping off leaflets. I don't know why they're dropping off leaflets. If I made a human-shaped robot, I wouldn't drop off leaflets. That sounds like a really boring use for robots. I look, I look to like Christian just being like, Come on, it's obviously robots sort of expression on my face for, for backup. I've not seen them. What? I I mean, you get robots to do all sorts of things, but delivering leaflets seems a bit... You know. Oh, you know what I meant if you saw them. Well, what do they look like? People! I've told you, they look like people. That's what's so like cool about it. And, and how do you know they're robots? They were all walking together. <laughs> we walk together all the time. No, not like that. Like, step together. Like, all in sets down the road. It was weird. People don't do that normally. Well, like... What about... Yeah, right, that is weird. And um, to interrupt this uh, grand meeting of the minds... <laughs> um... <laughs> Sus now arrives, presumably, um, f kind of like waving videos to to uh, emphasize the point. Um, Sus, you, uh, yeah, bound up. Completely oblivious to anybody else having any other discussion. I don't know what they're doing, but I couldn't return the videos because they're doing something. They, they, they've just like taken over the video shop and they're taking videos away. Like they wouldn't let me in. They're just like stealing from the video shop, and I don't know what like. Wait, the robots are stealing videotapes? Wait, what? Robots? <laughs> I wonder what they want with them. No, the maybe, maybe, maybe the robots. Those, like, no, the the nasty people, the parent teacher people with the. Were they flowers. handing out? Were they handing out leaflets? Yeah, those people. Robots. They're robots. I told you. Oh, that totally makes sense. Evil. <laughs> <laughs> they, did you see how they walk? They all walk in sets. It's really weird. I don't know how they were walking, but they were still stealing things from the video shop, and that's not okay. Wait, so they've got robots to hand out leaflets and steal videotapes? Who knows what they're doing? It's some plot. Maybe they're going to... They're don't know trying what to infiltrate our minds with something. They're trying to like put uh, some sort of message into our... Have you seen? They've had those stupid little thing is on every... I've been tearing it down because I've been fighting the cause. But... They're trying to put something in our brains. They're trying to they're trying to stop us from watching videos, and they're trying to make us think of some other stupid, boring, like get all everyone has to behave and be like perfect and even walk perfectly in steps. See, see, yeah. This Sounds is like exactly it. what Pink Floyd were talking about. <laughs> sure. We need to stop them. Well, obviously, guess... otherwise we can't get more videos. It does guess... mean I've still got Evil Dead 2, though, if we want to watch that again tonight. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure I want to watch it again. Oh. Anyway, how do we... <laughs> how do we... Well, the first thing we have to do, then, is prove to the other stupid adults that they're robots. Because if they know they're robots, then they'll stop listening to them. I, I, I hope. Unless the adults put the robots here. But the adults don't mind us watching stuff like this, or at least your parents don't. No, my parents are pretty cool with it. See? If they knew, they mustn't know. I mean, they just seemed kind of annoyed when the robots turned up, so... Well, yeah, that's, but your parents are sensible. Ooh. See? 
<laughs> what are we going to do if they replace my parents with robots? Exactly. We've got to stop them now. Imagine if your parents told us to stop and then started handing out leaflets. That would be weird. Wait. These robots have got something to do with the culture festival. And you're the only one we know of who's really involved in the culture festival spin. Are you sure you're not involved with it somehow? What? I didn't know they were going to the culture festival. Well, they're on all the posters and stuff. Like it's it's now like run by them or like I don't I don't know. Like it's They're trying to steal our culture festival. That's what it's all about. If we don't have videos, we don't have culture, I guess. And then Well, yeah. So 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 that's the big plan. We've got to stop them. That's like the most important thing in this place ever. Okay. Here's what we do. We're going to go into town. We're going to see if they're robbing any other culture store places. I want to make sure the music store is okay. And then we're going to go to the video store. And we're going to stake it out. And we're going to see what they're doing. And we're going to try and figure out what they're stealing. Because if yeah. they're stealing like Basil the Great Mass Detective, then that is obviously a tragedy. But it's it also doesn't really make sense. But if they're stealing Evil Dead and Terminator... Yeah. An alien. Look, then that's bad. One, one of them tried to stop me from getting Evil Dead. He like he saw me looking at the the, the tape. Um, I mean, obviously Ellen's cool, so it was fine. But it was one of those guys. Like honestly, his face. Like ugh. Uh, he. It's a robot he tried face. To stop me of course it's ugh. It. Well, he tried to stop me from getting it, and then when I went outside, one of there was some person, some woman who was like handing out some leaflets, and it said something about it was a parent teacher something, and it was something about. Oh, what was it? It was, it was like, you know, stopping like something about videos being bad media or something. So like, I think it is about the video store, but we should check for the music store too. That's fair. Well, we had one come round and knocked on the door and I managed to scare them off with some awesome riffs, but like he was talking about like corrupting the youth and heavy metal and like, I think they're targeting it all. Like, I think they're targeting everything fun. Corrupting the youth. See, they care about what we're thinking about. They're trying to control our thoughts. So it, sounds, robots. it sounds like the uh, Martian tarantulas have have a plan, and that plan is to go into town, see if there's anything else up, and then investigate the video store and what's happening there with the Parent Teacher Association. Spindle, Spindle wants to persuade Ziggy to take his guitar because Spindle thinks the robots will blow up if you play your guitar very, very loudly. I mean, it did scare them last time, so I will take my guitar and I have... Like, I, I'm just checking. Ball. Is it Sam or Spindle who doesn't know that a guitar needs to be amplified? <laughs> um, well, I have... I, can I... I mean, I'm only saying this because I had one, but in like sure. the early 2000s, like a little handheld battery-powered amp. Oh yeah, you can get them in the 80s, but they don't. They are not loud, like no. in any way, <laughs> I, shape, or form. I, I don't think. I don't think Spindle might know that, but she's not really worried about that at the moment. Sure. She just thinks it's. Oh no, I was just. I was just concerned that you didn't know that. So I, was, <laughs> I was just. Just about. I was just experience. checking in on you. Um, um, we so... are doing that, but as we are going, Ziggy also proposes that we change the band name to the Groovy Boomsticks. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, absolutely. And we will find out what happens then after a break. Um, so, we're going to take a 10 minute break now, folks. Um, but we'll be back soon and we'll find out what's happening at that, that goddamn video store. Um, until then, we'll see you.